it's kind of funny. The rabbit hole that I go down sometimes, I, I start in one, like, one direction, and then I end up doing something completely different. And sometimes it's because I ran into problems, sometimes it's because something else popped up that seemed more interesting. Either way, in today's video, let's talk about a battery-powered Plex Media Server. Because, why not? What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits, and you heard me right, battery-powered Plex Media Server. To be honest, I don't know 100% why, but here it is. L let me explain. I I got the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and I originally wanted to install uh, Rasplex on it, Plex Embedded uh, Media Player on it, and I wanted to basically compare and contrast two operating systems or, or Plex Media Players, you know, that were built for either just ARM devices or specifically for the Pi. And I wanted to see like, you know, what kind of speed differences there were, was there, you know, user interface differences, et cetera. I mean, I had a whole video kind of planned out just to kind of compare and contrast and see, you know, how well a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus would perform as a very affordable client. So that was the original plan. The problem that I quickly ran into is that I could not for the life of me, and I spent probably a solid eight hours, and I mean solid eight working hours trying to get it to, to function, was I could not get Rasplex, uh, I got Kodi, wasn't able to get Rasplex or the embedded Plex media player to run on the, the Raspberry Pi. All it would do is boot up the rainbow screen and show me the under voltage icon, like it wasn't getting enough power. And through a little bit of help from people online, I posted a video on Instagram, talked to some people on Twitter, did some Google research. Seems like this is kind of a common thing for the B+, the Raspberry Pi 3 B+, getting Rasplex and the Plex Media Player to run on it. See, originally I was chasing shadows because I thought maybe it wasn't getting enough power and I was plugging like everything into this damn thing. Like why will it not get enough power? It's ridiculous, it should have plenty of power. So to fast forward through all of that, I ended up installing Kodi. I thought maybe I was gonna be able to use the Plex add-on for Kodi, but then I couldn't get Kodi to connect with Ethernet or with Wi-Fi. It just kept giving me a network error. Spent a solid hour on that, trying to get that to work, and finally just threw in the towel. But I have this device, I wanted to do something with it, and I was able to get Raspbian to run on it. To burn the micro SD card, I did use Etcher, which by the way, I've used Etcher, Rufus, and Git, Git Rasplex, all three of those burners trying to get the clients to run. None of them worked. I even went down to Walmart and bought a specialty lower end micro SD card because I thought maybe my uh, SDXC card wasn't being recognized. Uh, it was a big long ordeal to get the clients to work and spent more money just trying, and it didn't work. Either way, I used Etcher in order to burn the Raspbian uh, ISO onto this card, which is a micro SDXC card. It's a pretty quick Lexar card. And that booted up immediately, it ran perfectly. And when it comes to voltage, by the way, I mean, as you can see, I uh, decided to run it off of a battery. This is a high output, I mean, it's five volts, two amp uh, battery, 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And it's been running for about 10, 15 minutes and it's only used 2%. So definitely low powered. I even watched a little bit of a movie off of it. Not a lot, probably five minutes. Uh, but either way, that means it's not really using very much power. So this is a smaller battery pack. I just bought another one that's 20,000 milliamps. So that would even run longer. So I don't know, there, it's kind of a weird rabbit hole for me to go down, but either way, that's where we are today. So getting Raspbian installed was the easy part. Then I was thinking to myself, before I realized I'm just gonna try to create like a mobile on the go Plex Media server, I actually tried to mount a network shared, which was the, the files being shared by Zeus. Zeus, of course, being my media server on my network. After some trial and, and errors and, and basically my huge lacking of understanding for Linux commands and, and just total noobish, I was not able to get it to connect to my Zeus share. I did run through a bunch of different tutorials, followed the command lines, try to get it to mount. In the end, it just, it was a hopeless cause. So I ended up uh, putting that aside and utilizing my T5 Samsung portable SSD. This is an SSD that I actually utilize for portable editing when I'm taking uh, video footage from one place to another, like home to work, for example, because sometimes I edit at work. So I use this because it is a low powered SSD. It's quick. Yes, it's being plugged into a USB 2.0 port. So no, it's not gonna be as nearly as fast as what it is on any other computer, but still it's what I had. So that's what I used. 
Then, of course, because everything in Linux is complicated, you plug it in and it's not able to be mounted because it's on XFAT and you have to install XFAT support. So I did that, then I mounted it. You know, Linux is funny, especially when you're using anything that's not from Linux. It's like every normal generic task has like five extra steps to do. And I think that's why I shy away from Linux. Like right now, if I wanted to go to the bathroom, I would go into the bathroom, I would whip it out and I would urinate and I would flush. Easy, right? But if I was Linux and I needed to go to the bathroom, I would get up, install a patch so I could walk one foot in front of the other through this house that is Windows dominated. Then I would have to install an update in order to open the door. And then I'd probably have to compile some kind of repository in order to you know, use the toilet. And then flushing, oh man, you better hope that update gets downloaded correctly because if not, you have a corrupt file system and you gotta start over. Just, okay, rant over, I'm just saying. Linux. So anyways, I mounted the SSD. Of course, I've already installed Plex Media Server, which that by itself, I followed a tutorial how to do. It was relatively simple, but I would not have been as easy able to do it if I did not follow a tutorial to do it. So Plex is installed, drive is mounted. Now I got to add the library. I want to take note here that I did go in and edit a library that I already tried to use an SMB share for, which was, you know, connecting to my Zeus server. That was a failed attempt. So I just edited what I already had and pointed it to my local SSD. And it was about nine movies. And it took a good while to just get all nine of those movies added to that library. I think I want to say maybe five minutes, maybe less, four minutes, but either way, when I added it, it was a huge delay on just nine movies. So I could not even imagine what it would have been like if I would have had, you know, all 500 gigs of this filled up with movies and then added them all at once. I'm sure it would have taken a very long time just because it is a Raspberry Pi. So it's a little, little limited on compute power. Either way, once I had that added, I wanted to test out its abilities because I've always at least known, thought I'd known that from a Raspberry Pi, you cannot use any kind of transcoding. It's just, it's not supported. So the first thing I did is I went in, I started Cars, which was one of the, car the cartoons that I added, the movies that I added to this uh, temporary Plex Media server. And I started playing it, it played it fairly quickly, but then I changed it to convert it to three megabits per second. And it really took its time. It kind of like hesitated and finally it actually started to play, which oddly enough, it was transcoding on my client, but the server screen, the actual now playing screen said it was still direct playing. This is not to say that it was playing great. I mean, this is like a 10 megabit per second file. Um, so it's working quite a bit, you know, for Raspberry Plex anyways, in order to convert this video file from 10 all the way down to three megabits per second. But nonetheless, it was transcoding. Much to my surprise, I did not think that was possible. And after I let it kind of play for a little bit, kind of catch up to itself, and I stopped messing around with the graphic user interface, um, it just seemed to be really like reliable. And that told me that Kind of, like if you have a movie that maybe is not more than 10 megabits per second quality, and depending on what you're changing the transcoding to, that as long as you leave the Raspberry Pi alone, you don't mess around with a web browser and, and stuff like that, and you, you allow all of that power to be you know dedicated to that one transcoded stream, you might be able to get one transcoded stream out of it. I don't know why you need to or want to, but still, it seems like that is a possibility, at least from my limited testing. But moving on from that, I was also curious, let's say if I did want to use this as a mobile battery powered Plex media server, what in the world would I use that for? And, and I'm brainstorming to myself thinking, okay, maybe one day I'll have a family will be going down and on a road and when, you know, the kids will be on their iPad 20s and, you know, they'd be doing their watching movies thing and I'd be like, okay, let's fire up the Raspberry Pi model 16 B C plus and uh, let's, let, let's, let's watch movies or whatever. Well, a couple things that I want to note here is that if you're going to do this one, you do have to create your uh, SSD or whatever you have attached to it to auto mount in the Raspberry Pi in the Linux command line. So you have to make it to where when you plug it in, you power it up, it will automatically mount those files. If you don't, Plex will still expect them to be there, but they won't be able to play. That's the first thing I try to do. It's like, oh, and I had to plug back into it and mount it again. So definitely have to make sure that you auto mount your SSD or hard drive. Two, 
Right now it's configured to connect to my local Wi-Fi network. I, uh, this is kind of a weird thing. I couldn't get Ethernet to work on this one either. It kept, you know, connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting. I don't know what it is. Tried multiple cables. I don't know, it's weird, but it did connect with Wi-Fi. So for the number two, and I'm gonna have to say that this is probably possible, I just don't know how to do it and or did not look up how to do it, is instead of making your Raspberry Pi connect to an existing network, you'll probably wanna configure your Raspberry Pi to broadcast a network, something that somebody else can connect to, like let's say their iPhone or something like that, where they can connect to a Wi-Fi signal that you're broadcasting straight from this battery-powered Plex media server. It's automatically being connected on the same network as the Plex media server, which will allow you to get, uh, allow you to get you know, a direct communication with your client from your server. But let's say you get all that set up, you're driving down the road, you want the kids watching t uh, TV shows or movies or whatever. Through my testing, I found that the Plex Pi can really only handle about three direct play streams at the same time if you're fidgeting with the graphic user interface. Like I had Chromium pulled up and stuff, so I know that's gonna take some power. And every time I click something, it's you know, it's just having issues. As a headless server, when it's not, you know, outputting any display or anything like that, I was able to get four total streams at the same time. Yes, it takes a little bit for them to boot up. And yes, sometimes every once in a while, I would have a stream buffer. Um, not all of them, but you know, it is what it is. It's a low powered Plex media server that is literally battery powered. So, you know, if you got more than three kids in the car that wants to watch three different movies on three different, you know, iPads or whatever, Maybe this isn't for you. I know, I'm kind of stretching because I, I made this like battery powered Plex media server. And I was like, what What would you use this for? I mean, I don't have any personal use for it, but that doesn't mean you won't or somebody you know doesn't have a, a need for a battery powered Plex media server. It's kind of random, I know. But still possible. I can literally log into this Plex media server right now and watch a movie off of it. and. It's still at 97%. So I've used 1% in the last 15 minutes and it's pretty much idle. So battery should last for a while, throw a bigger battery on it, it'll, it'll last twice as long or whatever. I don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a random thing. So guys, let me know in the comments, what do you think you would use something like this for? Like, what do you think the uh, use case scenario would be where you would have a battery powered Plex media server, you know, broadcasting its own SSID for Wi-Fi, allowing you to connect to it with, you know, your iPads or your iPhones or whatever, and allowing you to, I mean, what do you think this would be useful for in your life? Let me know down below in the comments. I'd be loved, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Also, if you, anyone actually has any real experience, and I'm stressing this, real experience with a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, this is very specific. I know it sounds like they all should work the same, but they don't. But with this specific model, getting Rasplex or the Plex Media Player embedded OS to run off of it, let me know also in the comments down below because I cannot get it to work. And I've had a bunch of people like, oh, all you do is do this. And it looks so simple. I mean, it, it sounds so simple. And if you don't get it to run, I don't get it to run. I'm like, this is so dumb. Why can't I do this? But online, if you search it, the B plus specifically has issues running Rasplex. And I don't know why. I found one website that had a super complicated way to possibly get it working, but yeah, I don't know. So if you have any experience specifically with this model, getting Rasplex to run, I would love to hear because I would like to have a follow-up video to this video where I'm testing client software on this, whether that is Kodi with the network interfaces working properly, Rasplex, or even Plex Embedded OS. Those are really the kind of the three that I would like to check out. So if you have any information on the B+, let me know down below. Well, that's all I got for you. The battery powered, Plex media server, because why not?